Hi everyone, this is Carrick from Angry Centaur Gaming. Have you ever made a mistake even though as you were heading to do it, the entire universe seemed poised to warn you, like a date who constantly scratches their groin during dinner, the cosmic forces try to send you warnings all the time? Sometimes you ignore them to your own peril, and sometimes you go and spend money to buy a game based on the lives of a bunch of dudes whose personal heroes are the kids from the porch and deliverance playing banjo and the maker of shotgun camo skins. It's this path of fate I followed to bring you the review for the AAA titled Duck Dynasty. So today I bring to you the Waterfowl Murder Simulator of the Century, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the wide world of rednecks so thick they probably consider lingerie a pair of jorts and a wet fart. Graphics are up first. This game actually looks pretty good for a Dreamcast game. Maybe. Actually, no, scratch that. I'm not sure what engine this runs on, but it doesn't actually run on it. Pop-up isn't just prevalent, it is an actual feature here where the graphical detail is so astounding that it even confuses the foliage in the game. Watch as trees look thick, then lush, then slowly fade to nothing, then jump back into being as you get within seven feet of them like they're Transformers and only have like two forms. Animation follows a similar path as you realize you're playing as a character that spends the entire game having to take a cabbage and hamburger shit. Watch as he waddles with bow-legged nimbleness everywhere he goes. The best part is the beards on everyone. Actually, they're not as much beards as layers of dirty paper mache that a third grader stuck to their faces at night when they were asleep. I get that this is a budget game, but budget means money was actually spent somewhere, and I'm not exactly seeing where most of that went. Well, maybe three bucks went to graphics and the water effects, which actually don't look terrible. They just look acceptable, so I guess that's saying something. Texture is also fairly terrible with the ground textures and those of pretty much everything in the game looking like it was run through a 1999 glaucoma filter. In fact, there's almost nothing positive graphically about this game, aside from the fact that you can tell what's occurring throughout. I do have to say it never crashed, and aside from glitching shadows, bad animation, blurry textures, and insanely basic geometry, everything looked okay here, which means almost nothing did. Sound, music, and voice. Sound. I usually break these games down by these categories because there's going to be some give and take in each category. However, as I listen to the whine of the one-cylinder truck engine and listen to the shotguns that literally sound like someone yelled psh into the microphone, it dawned on me there might not be much variation in this game. Oh wait, the metal detector sounds like a real metal detector, but even the animals sound like something's wrong with them. Aside from the ducks, they seem to have been the focus of the game, which makes sense due to the name. The other animals just sounded like they were run through a random noise generator. Music. Well hey, here is something nice. Sure it's hillbilly rock and old bad country, but some of it does indeed sound professional and not that bad. That is when you're in the truck, all the other music is just plain bad and simple blah. It takes true talent to make blah this blah, but God God damn it if they didn't aim for that low goal and they pretty much hit it perfectly voice you know what it's the real people doing the voices which is an actual plus when not sounding like they were reading from a script while sitting there reading from a script it's not bad it's not good either it's just not aggressively bad it sure does sound like they just took one take on all the scenes from the script but hey it's a budget title so all in all the voices though stilted sounded better than most other parts gameplay i question that dinosaurs got hit by meteorite i think these dudes ancestors exterminated everything in their sphere of influence i mean in the first half of the game you kill an entire disney movie of small animals throwing squirrels screeching from trees and single-handedly destroying an entire migration of ducks from a single blind i mean shit they shoot 12 ducks and one of the guys sits back and belches and says well that's about enough for dinner dinner for who the dallas cowboys front defensive line 12 ducks for dinner these guys make exxon valdez employees feel bad for what they've done to nature but let's be honest they're not nature conservationists you follow the life of one of the young kids within the tribe of duck destroyers learning from each of the tribesmen a different way to annihilate life in their area like a nuclear bomb the shooting in the game is passable in that when you point at things and pull the trigger whatever was in your sights usually explodes like a pinata of animal spirits poorly animated particle effects and sorrow overall the control isn't so bad when you're on foot aside from the previously mentioned case of carrying a load on deck then you drive around and shoot more shit then you jump in a boat and go fishing then you stomp around islands grabbing frogs like some kind of red neck godly crane toy and you take the largest weapon you can possibly get without buying a special license and destroy alvin simon theodore and their entire family line all this happens as you unlock things which i have to say i admit was an okay part of the game. I actually enjoyed unlocking treasures and finding things with a metal detector, but it was the fact that the main parts of the game were so deplorable that these side quests were like a breath of fresh air when your brother farts under the covers. Anything is better than that. Sometimes you also get to go racing, or they call it racing, but because there are almost no physics for the models for the boats or trucks, racing is basically pointing with motors, and though that sounds like an awesome hurdle for American gladiators, in a game it's boring as hell. Oh, and you get to play practical jokes on the other characters, which was even less fun and involved than it sounds. In the end, the game basically breaks down into a series of insanely shallow mini games wrapped up with a Duck Dynasty story which means Shakespeare. This isn't. Hell, this isn't even one of those creepy novels where a chick gets knocked up by a werewolf. This is jumping in your truck and driving around and shooting something living or once living or could be living then going somewhere else and doing the same thing for eternity with no hope of escape. 
What does Duck Dynasty get right? Well, they spelled the name right on the box. Unlocking little treasures and stuff made me want to die far less than the main game. The mini games held my attention once. The real people voiced the characters. And the fishing mini game had a unique and interesting casting mechanic that had it been wrapped up in a fishing game or any other type of game that had been more developed with goals and requirements, it could have actually been good. What did they do wrong? Every single thing that isn't in the prior list and actually those sort of suck too. Listen, every dev has to put dinner on the table, even if it's a squirrel pudding, and I can bet most of them didn't wake up and say, let's make the most budget game possible that doesn't involve a goat and wonky world physics. And that is actually laudable and no one blames them. I do, however, blame whoever was in charge of giving them the tools and time they needed to make something passable as a game. Because if you take the entire package of activities, a fun game could have been created here. However, whoever was in direct control here invited everyone to the game making contest and then forgot to give Give them the tools, money, time, or motivation to make anything beyond a high school programming project with a currently popular name. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or throw the disc into the air and shoot it out of the sky rating scale? This is actually a buy. Aside from all the... <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. This... Fuck it. No, this is not a buy. Budget titles can still be good. We've seen it. However, this isn't good. This isn't even bad. This is just shallow, boring, and trite. And despite having acceptable mini games once, despite at least not crashing, it can barely be called a game. In fact, it should come with a fucking airbag to catch people who faint in surprise that it actually runs when they put it in the disk drive. If you find this game at a flea market for five bucks, buy it, then smash it right in front of the seller and ask for another 10 for saving their miserable time. So that's it. If you liked the review, hit like. If you disliked it, hit dislike. Share it if you can. And remember the amazing words of wisdom from the family's patriarch. Beaver are river tricksters. Peace out.